All right, plumbers, I wanna to talk to you about your stool today. And no, I'm not talking about a doctor, I'm talking about your marketing stool because I had two consults this week and guess what? Both were in dire straits due to a simple mistake that a lot of new business owners make. And I wanna to talk to you about it so you can avoid it. Now, when I talk about stool, I'm not talking about poop. What I'm talking about, regardless of the fact that we're talking plumbing, right? So, but what I'm talking about is you're, you're like, if you're sitting on a stool and you've got one leg, one, one leg you're sitting on, you want, you're a monopod. Basically, the lightest breeze can topple you over and you're done. If you've got two, all right, you're not going to go side to side, but you can still go forward or back. You got three, there you go. Now you're a tripod. And we all know that tripods work, so that's why they use them all the time. But what I'm getting at is so many people build a one-legged stool of marketing for their business, and it's killing businesses left and right. Because I, honestly, I don't think that this is something that people do you know, knowingly. I think it happens accidentally because what they do is they go into business, they work on word of mouth at first, then they get a little bit of revenue, they get a call from somebody like, mm, I don't know, Yelp, and then they sign up for a program, that program gives them some leads. A lot of these people don't realize how good or bad those leads are in the grand scheme of things because they haven't been focused on actually learning how to do business yet, so there's that, but what it ends up doing is they they are able then, okay, cool. Now I'm getting some revenue. Now I can hire somebody to answer my phones. Now I can hire another tech. Now I can get more vans. Now I can start building a bigger business. And what I see is people getting to about mm, three, four techs sometimes. And then out of the blue, Yelp, in this case, during this particular consult, disappears. Or rather, Yelp changed the rules on them. And then what ended up happening is they started getting leads differently. Now, I don't know Yelp's platform that much because honestly, I'm not the world's largest fan. Um, I'm always willing to be wrong, but so far, I, I'm not a big Yelp, um, Yelp advocate. So now what ends up happening is now that all the leads are terrible, they're all looking for a price and not an actual commitment. And a lot of them have had other people call them like in front of our, like the, the person on this console. So um, he likely will be a customer soon. So what ends up happening is he, he's on a one-legged stool. He didn't do anything else to build his company. And I was on another call with a company who did the same thing on Google local service ads. Google local service ads are some of the most notoriously difficult things to game right? It's not like we can just throw money at the system and bam, we're going to get the leads. It doesn't work like search and it doesn't work like general advertising. Google will throttle you instead of you throttling Google. And so local service ads are great when you can get the volume, which there's a whole thing about protecting the platform by playing what the game Google wants you to play, making sure you're, you know, working that platform correctly. That's another video for another time. But if that's the only thing you're building your company on, and I ran into this where a company had 70 leads a month coming from LSA, and then he basically built his entire business around that book of business. What do you do when those things dry up? He had nothing, nothing, even though he could have, right? Instead of using that revenue on building a brand into the market, trying to influence the world around him, he kept letting Google influence his business. And that's a problem. And I see it all the time. This is not a unique situation. I talk about it a lot because it's a problem that people keep having. So what ends up happening is these guys topple and suddenly their leads dry up. They, they have a really hard time getting more calls because they never diversified their marketing efforts at all. So here's what I recommend you do. Don't put yourself in this position. Please don't. I don't care who does your marketing. If it's you, if it's me, if it's someone else, doesn't matter. Make sure that you have 
more than one iron in the fire, especially when it comes to the health of your company, which pays your employees, which pays you, helps build the life that you want. If all you're doing is leveraging one spot, well, you're kind of asking to be knocked down a peg, to be honest. Now, again, I don't think people do this on purpose. I don't think that it's something that a lot of business owners realize. This is also why it's very, very important for you to be a student of business in general. You don't have to be a student of marketing, be a student of business. Understand how businesses work over the course of time, right? The ups, the downs, the challenges, the thresholds, the like plateaus you'll end up on, milestones, all that stuff. Goal setting, absolutely seek out coaches, seek out um, just advice. I read a lot of business books because it helps me be a better business owner and I'm able to offer my team a better world and my clients a better world. You gotta do the same thing. If you aren't looking for help, well, you're looking for help. You listen to this video or this podcast, so that's good. Um, so the other thing is, so with diversification, you have to remember that the big thing about both LSA and Yelp is they are lead generation platforms, which means there's no loyalty, which means that the second that you turn them off or they turn off on their own, no one else knows who you are. That's the danger. Now, if you were running months of Facebook ads at a, you know, if you were running them well, um, and months of Google display and months of YouTube and months of community engagement, because you cannot ignore real life. <laughs> Digital marketing is not a replacement for actual physical being. Um, but if you were doing those things, and if you were consistently putting yourself out there, then when LSA and Yelp drop off, guess what you still have? You have the actual real estate inside someone's head. And the great thing about that is no tech company owns that. No one can come around the back end of that and hit the off button on you. And that's the danger with relying solely on lead gen as you build your business. Will it play a role? Yes, it should. It's out there. Utilize it. But be measured and be decisive and understand where your vulnerabilities are when it comes to customer acquisition because you can't survive without customers. And if you can't keep the flow of customers when one of these platforms goes down, well, you're sitting in a tough spot. So this is the things to think about. Now, um, you have to remember what I'm talking about is you have to build influence for your company. You have to build a world where people want to interact with your company. That doesn't happen on lead gen platforms. That only happens on messaging and communication. And that is brand. So and the great thing about that is there will always be publishing platforms that you can take advantage of to put your money on in order to connect with the audience. The better your message, the better you are at crafting messages, the better your chances of leveraging it in a good way. On, but you have to be there consistently. Don't try and run Facebook ads for two weeks and think that you're going to have a lick of chance. You need to be running them for months. Average time that we like to run campaigns or try a marketing initiative for somebody is three months. And honestly, that's kind of short. You really should give it about six. Then you have to remember that frequency matters. You have to hit people over the head enough times with the baseball bat called your business in order for them to know what's going on. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to start writing these down and putting them in my uh, own marketing materials. But the, the problem with lead gen is it's one-to-one. -one. You spend 60 bucks evangelizing yourself to one person when for the same $60, you could do 400 people. But because you are so focused on getting the call today, you aren't actually trying to engineer the calls for tomorrow with those 400 people. And it's really, I mean, it's the short-sighted versus the long-term. So the, when you're building business, as you guys start growing, as you, as you get revenue, as you put yourself out there and put yourself on some of those shaky grounds that business owners just have to, you're going to have to make calls that feel scary. That's just being a business. Um, but, Make sure that you are doing it with as much security as you can 
And if you are hiring like a team of technicians to join your crew, but every, every way you plan on feeding them is going to be lead gen, ouch. The only way to make that work is if you have a massive pile of customers behind you that still love, know, and trust you um, that can help with repeat business. Lifetime value does matter, but it's a lot of people are spending all of their revenue on trying to get the next customer on Google. And it's not just Google. It's Yelp, it's Thumbtack, it's LSA. But people, you're leaning too hard into the one thing that's working without building up the things that need care and nurture. And your business is one of those. So I want to see you all succeed. I want to see you build strong influence in your market, not just a presence on Google. So um, marketing is complicated. Marketing is nuanced. Marketing has a lot of things inside of it that all affect each other. And that's why you need a system around your marketing. I will never walk away from that statement because I've seen it for years. We used to do television, radio, mailers, phone books, those are all things that I used to advertise on. And guess what? They built businesses, big businesses. What I'm saying is utilize some of the philosophy that they built thousands, thousands, hundreds, I guess, of years of media on and apply them to your business today. That will save you the heartache that I have seen people go through multiple times where they're standing on their one legged stool. I don't want you to have a rickety business. I want you to thrive. Anyway, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Thanks for listening. If you want to know more about um, marketing stuff, by all means, subscribe, follow, like, wherever you find me. Um, you can find out a little bit more about me at tylerwilliams.net. You can find my agency at mammothforplumbers.com because we work with plumbing companies and help you guys avoid some of these mistakes that I talk about. I hope this was helpful. I hope this lands well for you. You have a good one. We'll talk to you later.